Thank you for watching another Olympic Softworks Presents technical demonstration. All of these demonstrations focus on open source, Linux, cloud, networking, and IoT. In this episode, we will be talking about cloud images with special guest star, DHCP. I hope you're ready for some real geekery coming up, because in the second TLDR section, I'm going to be going over who might be the special, special guest star, Machine ID, in addition to DHCP. Um, cloud images seemingly do not, at least Ubuntu images and probably Debian as well, do not update the machine ID on new instances when you clone them or other things. So this lab was made to examine that phenomenon and determine how to fix it. Let's get started. Okay then, let's pick up where we left off. So, this is the original image that we imported last video. Now I went ahead and made a couple extra of, uh, VMs here that we're going to uh, we're going to uh, populate. Now, how, the easy way to do this is uh, you know just make the VM like usual. But uh, once you made one, instead of going through the whole thing to make another one, just clone it. Even though there's nothing in it, it's it, you're 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 duplicating a document here. It is no big deal. Boom. Okay. We have five servers here. Five virtual machines. All of them, with the uh, exception of this one, that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this would be 0, 4. Okay, let's check that. what I know. So, I've got these folks all prepped up here, ready to go. IP 190 to 194. We are now going to import Focal 401 see it pop up right there. Here's 402. And 403. Now this is uh, essentially what would be automated. So what would happen is a uh, if you needed a, uh, several of these to be fired up to do a job um, you would script a few of these being fired up. Um, you could actually uh, create the entire VM through uh, the command script and then import this into it, execute the, the, uh, the VM all through scripting. Um, the only reason we're not doing that is again because this is a demonstration. This is not actually scripting the, the solution right now. What I'm trying to do here is I'm building my lab. Um, I've got a couple of services running. And as I do things and, and process different services that I want to experiment on in my lab, I'm going to be making these, these videos here. Um, to begin with, there's a, a, a lot of uh, fundamentals that I really want to focus in on that um, in my curriculum at, uh, in college was glossed over. 
Uh, there's a lot of uh, in in my the way the way my head works is I see I think in pictures, so I'm trying to think of these edge cases that that came up that um, there just wasn't time for me to address. They weren't part. Of the, these edge cases are not on the tests. Um, I passed uh, CCNA, CCENT, um, the the standard CompTIA test uh, certifications. Edge cases are not a big deal in those. Those things are very wide and very shallow. So in these videos, I'm going to be exploring some of the, the, the deeper um, issues behind some of these. And in this one, I'm going to be addressing a problem that happens specifically in Ubuntu machines and how they react on a network um, because it appears that their machine IDs don't get updated when you create more of them. Um, this isn't a problem a lot of times. Uh, but it, it depends. Like uh, if you have, um, say, say you're an admin and you have software that requires a serial number, that requires a license. Every machine needs to be unique. Um, the machine ID in a machine is typically generated when the machine is first fired up. It's, uh, I think it's a 20 byte, might be 20 digits, but it's a 20, 20 digit, 20 byte, something like that number so it's a big number right and this number should be unique from machine to machine to machine um, apparently in Ubuntu machines which are uh, some of the most common images used depending on your network equipment um, when a machine fires up one of the artifacts that can happen here is if you also are using DHCP every machine with the same machine ID will get the same IP address even though the MAC address is different and you would expect DHCP to be using the MAC address to determine what the IP address would be but it turns out that in the DHCP protocol there's several kinds of actual package that can be sent as the uh, the original um, announcement I forgot what the actual package name but is the, the, the original announcement package can either contain a MAC, which is what they call a hardware address, or it can contain the machine ID. And apparently in Ubuntu, they contain the machine ID. So this is a kind of a geeky video um, on testing the edge case <laughs> of how that all breaks down. So now that we have five machines here, all with five unused disks, we'll just add all those disks in. Change the boot order so they can boot. Da -de 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 -da. And one more after this. Thankfully. All right. So that was that was the equivalent of firing up the machine, hitting F10 a whole bunch of times until you get into the the BIOS, finding the boot order, setting the boot order, and then exiting. That I had. There we go. I just don't like have any having any other options enabled there. So let's start these up. Let's see what we got. So again, these are fresh machines. All of these have a brand new image spun up from the same image that number 400 came from, which is a brand new image that was grabbed um, two days ago as I record this. It had QEMU agent added to it has not even been updated. Has not been updated, was just installed with that one deal. So these other five machines are the same image. Hopefully, they will all have different IP addresses. As we have uh, said in Cloud, in Cloud Init, I'm, I'm absolutely expecting that to be the case. 
they will all have different MAC addresses. I'm expecting that to be the case as well. And all the machine IDs will be the same. They should not be, but I'm expecting that result. So what a lab does is it allows us to go in and see how close we are to reality. Let's see now. Let's, uh, let's go in here with number one. Let's have this on number one. We'll do this on number two. Number three. Number four. And number five. Okay. And console. Console. The reason I do different tabs for these is because when you go, when you're using the console in one machine and then you click to another machine, it erases what you were doing in the previous machine because the console doesn't actually spawn a brand new console, it just reuses that console. So your communication with the previous console gets interrupted and you lose what was on the screen. When you're trying to track down problems and things, you really want that not to be the case. All right, so. MAC address is A692. C7B versus A692. Okay, so MAC addresses are different. So the hardware address on the MAC, the MAC address on the uh, virtual NIC card that's in here, they all have unique MAC addresses, it looks like. That's a good deal. Oh, did I check the machine ID on this one? I did not. Nine five zero A nine five zero A. Yeah, I wouldn't want to bet this is going to be nine five zero A also. There we go. Okay, so indeed, the MAC addresses are being regenerated as they should be, whereas the machine ID is not, as it should also be, and uh, the. <laughs> See, that's what happens when you when you move off of this. So whenever you're doing uh, testing on one of these, make sure you have tabs set up for your different virtual machines instead of trying to go from machine to machine inside of uh, one tab and, and reusing the console. Okay, so... 9-0, 9-1, 9-2. Yep, they're all fine. So we have verified that using the standard import method, MAC addresses do get regenerated. The IP addresses, if you set up a uh, static IP, uh, do get um, set properly. The machine ID is not set properly. So... Um, I'm very quickly going to fast forward through this here. I'm not going to be talking. All, you're going to see me like Superman type here. And I'll be deleting these machines. And then we'll be using a clone of machine 400. And we're going to use virtual machine to clone these machines. And uh, we'll see if, vir if virtual, bo uh, <laughs> virtual box, if Proxmox and its cloning facility will be able to regenerate the machine ID if the standard uh, cloud init packages that ship with the image uh, with the cloud init with the cloud enabled image from Ubuntu do not regenerate machine ID. Um, all right, see where here we go.
Okay, here we go. nice it knows red box can't stay like that okay that's exactly what we had last time five machines all of these are exact ish duplicates of 400 the reason I'm doing this is I'm, I'm curious if Cloning these, ma these machines will generate new Macs, new machine numbers, new IPs. What will happen? Because this machine here, remember, was cloud initted to be 1, 2, 3. So will this one also be 1, 2, 3? Yes. So let's, uh, let's change these. What we had before. Okay, let's fire them up. So th the prediction is for these that they will be exactly like the previous set. I think that because I'm cloning them, I'm not positive, but I think the MAC addresses will change. The IPs, of course, will change because we have physically set that in the uh, cloud init stuff. Um, now, I don't think the machine IDs will change here. And, and I wouldn't expect them to, to be honest with you. Um, we're doing a clone of a machine. We're not doing it. This is not from a template. This is a clone of a machine. So the machine ID should be the same on all of these machines. And this, is, this should be that way. So if it is that way on, on these... Uh, that's as it should be. Let's go ahead and set up our tabs again. All right. Are these still booting? Hmm. Well, that one was.
almost done. Still doing something. Yeah. Idling doesn't happen at 17% of your uh, CPU resources. Actually, we can do a lot of what we wanted right here. So, on a standard link local address from uh, IPv6, the uh, MAC address is included in the last 48 bits. So we've got 7A1C as the MAC address here. We've got uh, ADCB here. 6C3C here. So the MAC addresses are different for sure. So when the machines are, and that's a real MAC address? Not a link local? Weird. OK. Proxmox does work in mysterious ways sometimes. So I'm going to, I'm going to guess that this MAC is different than all the rest, though. Let's see if we can log into any of these other machines now. Ah, it was still going. Yep, 950A, they're all 950As. Interesting. Okay, so that was uh, that is as expected. Now I want to illustrate what happens if uh, machines with different MAC addresses, but the same machine number, do actually get fired up on the same system. It's not a good. What? what? Note to uh, those of you who are going to be engineers in the future, don't make pop-up windows go away. When your user asks for a context menu and the context menu is there, that context menu should be there until the user moves away from it. Very, very annoying. So let's try this here. So let's go into Cloud Init. And let's get rid of this. Let's go ahead and set DHCP on these machines. I have one of those routers. That you cannot tell to pay attention to the MAC address. Uh, with DHCP. Okay. 
So make the prediction. The prediction is that when I fire these machines up, they are now set to ask the router nicely for the next available uh, IP address. That router will then respond with the exact same IP address five times. Now we, we've already booted these machine machines up, so they should be a little quicker to fire up for us here. Oh, there they all are. Okay. So let's go into the console here. Uh, number one. Console on number two. Console on number three. Four and five. Okay. Still cloud in it booting. <laughs> that does take a while. That uh, control H you see there, that is me typing backspace. The terminal that you get here is a very bare, very, very bare bones terminal. You can't even copy and paste into it. Um, there's other ways you can, I, I think there's other types of terminals that this can spawn, but they'll require hooks, and, and the, the basic one is this one, and that's what I'm going to be using. Hopefully I'll be using this as little as possible. We'll actually uh, SSH into this, and then we'll have a real terminal. IP is 0159. Actually, we can just go to summary. It'll tell us 159. 159, 159, and 159. So what's happening here is every machine is responding when it fires up. It's uh, loading a DHCP packet with its machine ID, sending that out as the original hello message. The router is hearing that translating that into whatever its internal bit structure is to make a, a brand new IP address, hands that back to the host. The host, host says then, thank you. That happens five times here, and every machine is handing, instead of a MAC address, every, every machine is handing the router the machine ID. And the router is just good-naturedly thinking that that is the MAC address, and since that's a unique number, it's going to hand these machines out the same machine, the same IP address five times. Um, the way to get around this is to have the machine ID file that you saw me um, cataloging here when I did the cat and the machine ID. That was me looking at the file that contains the machine ID. It's just, it, it's a file which is a, a link from another file, <laughs> of course. So what you do is uh, you, you, you unlink the files, you zero it out, then you relink the files again, and then you save that and use that as a, as a template. So that is the generally agreed upon solution from the cloud engineers, I believe at Debian, but they might be the cloud engineers at Proxmox. So what I have done here in this last video was just basically going over the research that has already been done, documenting it. It definitely does work the way it works, and the work around the fix is to erase the machine ID. Um, so going forward, what I will do in the third video to this series, the next video, will be actually creating a one script fits all to take a machine image, add the cloud EMU uh, agent into it, to zero out the machine ID, and then prep that as a terminal or as a, uh, as a template. So let's, uh, let's do that.
bigger here. There we go. So I have the specific commands right here. Here we go. So echo new line into let's see machine ID. So this is the file that <laughs> one of the things you cannot do is uh, echo you can't use sudo to do an echo because the sudo is good only for the left hand side of this phrase on the right hand side of the phrase where it actually tries to stick this into that file you're no longer you no longer have root privilege there's a way around this Normally what you would do is you would su into the root, but you can't su into the root here because the root has no password. There is no root account. So I'm going to do something that you should not do. This is bad. Only do this when you are absolutely required to be in real, real user mode. Where you you're not you're just using sudo, where everything you type has has root privilege. Be very careful if you do this. Um, also, when you do this, um, your your current right now, even though I have the number sign and I am root right now, the path and machine variables, the the environment variables, are still set to me as a standard user. So if there are groups that you need to have. Um, uh, in as your your user in order order to interact with different subsystems you if you just pseudo bash like this it's not really going to be root you're not you're not going to have the the root groups so just be careful but the echo will work now because we are root Let's go ahead and put that in there. There we go. That's better. That's better. And next we're going to remove the This is the linked um, Yeah. This file doesn't exist. So we're going to remove it. It, it's uh, it's actually just a link from the first file. Um, all right. Oh, ln. Always look over your commands when you're doing these. Remember, you are root. When you are root, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> the machine will do whatever you tell it, whether that's what you want or not, is the best way to think about it. Okay. So at this point, we have zeroed out. If we cat this now, there's nothing there. So what will happen when this machine is newly spawned the next time this machine uh, boots up after a clone it will regenerate that file and it will it will regenerate it from um, some entropy that was gathered during its boot so hopefully these machine ids now will be unique from machine to machine to machine so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to template this machine we're going to shut it off 
create a template from it because I believe this is the this is the image that I have been seeking for my uh, for my next uh, set of, of goals here. Then we're going to spawn five more machines from that machine and make sure the MAC address and machine numbers are all unique among them. All right, here we go. Okay, and there it is. Gee, that was hard. Now, let's make some clones. Now, when you clone things, you can have a linked clone, which means that when the clone runs, the operating system will be more or less in read-only memory. Um, any changes will be stored as new, new things changed only in that machine. But it's not as useful to do new things with, to add to, to manipulate, to, uh, to configure as a full clone. So that's what we're going to do. All of these will be full clones. That's 401. Let's do 402. This will be Ubuntu 01. Okay. Let's just check them out real quick here. So they have everything they need. Uh, okay, so if I want to experiment with this, I need to set them individually. I guess that only makes sense. Uh, lost a U there. Where's Vanna when you need her? That's an old person joke there. Okay. Let's fire them up. We don't even need to get into the con the uh, consoles for them. We can just look at them in the summaries. Once the guest starts running, it'll tell us what IP address it got. Ooh. 
148. That one's already fired up. Two three five. One eight one. These are the last two. There we go. Two one nine and one nine one. Was that one nine one up here too? No, one eight one. Okay. So excellent. Just real quick, let's do uh, two machines. Let's look at machine zero and machine one here. So this one, let's. Uh, One five seven A Hello Oh Yeah, it's one of those artifacts of going from one terminal to another. Another tab, there we go. And four D zero zero. Yep. And of course, Max are all different. Four E A five. One D five one. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay. So this first set of uh, of videos specifically focusing on using Proxmox um, to kind of troubleshoot something, get some data, um, using the different facilities in Proxmox to quickly fire up some machines, check some things, and then destroy them and then restart them. If we wanted, just, just to be clear, we can go ahead and kill these. And you could reuse these entries in your UI, in your Proxmox UI, as virtual machines again. All you'd need to do to freshen them up for your next project would be to do this. Detach there, and then remove it. You could then put any image you want there. If you're going to use, uh, we could go ahead and grab the Fedora image. As a matter of fact, I'm not sure if I wrote that or not. Actually, I think that's going to only go to... I hard-coded this to do uh, Machine 400, I believe, back in the day. And will that work? Yep, 
Yes, indeedy. All right. Double click, add. So <laughs> what I just did is I imported the Fedora Cloud image. Let's go ahead and fire that up and see what that looks like. Just real quick. What do you say? I'm curious. I haven't done this yet. Hey. Hmm? Well, that looks familiar. I wasn't sure if I uh, went ahead and, and fixed the Fedora image yet. I didn't put in the uh, the checking, though. I like running a uh, the command without any uh, without any flags, any arguments to it, and then having the file spit out uh, a, a a somewhat comprehensive, just a, a quick help. I didn't add that to this yet, but it does. Uh, it did take the arguments. Still booting. Do I want to log in? Race condition, anyone? That that doesn't go anywhere good, right? Well, I better wait. It will be done soon. I'm not bagging on it. These things take a little while when they first fire up. I think Ubuntu takes a little longer than this sometimes. And this is actually all showing. Sometimes the Ubuntu boot doesn't show all the time. It goes too fast and the, the virtual <laughs> serial port can't keep up. Poor thing. Is it upgrading? Really? Live? Wow. Okay, I'll wait. This is taking longer than the Ubuntu one because it's it looks like it's actually doing a an apt update or, or a is it is it yum that uh that Red Hat uses. God, it's been so long. Can I log in now? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Yep. But it's still going. Oh, okay. There we go. That's that's. This is the prompt. Final cloud service execute. This is what I've, I'm used to seeing when the cloud init is done booting. Okay. There we go. Definitely Red Hat. Okay. So, how to get uh, cloud images? What are cloud images? How to use cloud images? Um, I hope you, uh, if you, if you follow this all the way through, you are either really a hardcore nerd, or you like my voice, or you're asleep already. Um, in any case, have a great day, folks. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. Hey, hit the like and subscribe. I'm supposed to say that at some point. Thanks.